Welcome to This Just In, the show bringing you the latest advancements in healthcare, strategy, innovation, and public policy. And now, for the fastest voice in healthcare, here's your host, Justin Barnes. Thank you for tuning in, and welcome to the special summer episode of This Just In Radio. We're broadcasting live from my Atlanta studios. I'm here with Roberta Mullen from Healthcare Now Radio. Welcome to the studio as well, Roberta. Justin, I'm so glad to be here. I'm looking forward to this. I do want to roll into our very first guest, my good friend, my peer on my uh, Georgia Hymns board, uh, Jeffrey Brown, for CIO Piedmont Healthcare. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you, Justin. Glad to be here. It's great to see you. The whole Georgia community has done a phenomenal job building one of the most powerful hymns chapters uh, in Georgia hymns. So I, I appreciate all you do and all you donate uh, and volunteer to that group, my friend. So then it's a very important mission to take on. So I, from your perspective, uh, we just and we talked a little bit about telehealth because actually one of the, those initiatives certainly going on at, at Piedmont Healthcare. But Jeff, what uh, healthcare or health IT trends are you seeing in the industry? Well, I'm seeing quite a few, but I think starting at the top of it is really a whole lot of activity in our industry on M and A mergers and acquisitions. Okay. You're seeing that happen at the hospital level. You're seeing it happening with practices and even other joint venture activities. And the real challenge that comes forward in our industry is now you're blending uh, people, obviously, and cultures and that type of thing, but you're also having to have this similar technologies come together and work more effectively to yes. deliver the services and the care. Uh, so we, that's one huge trend that I see happening. Uh, another trend is really around efforts around cybersecurity. While that's an old topic, uh, there more continues important. to be a ton, <laughs> yes. a, a ton of focus in that area and new innovations like blockchain. We won't talk about blockchain today, but it's really a, a new way for secure information to be exchanged. And there are a number of innovative companies that are diving into that. Where we're going to see it first in the healthcare arena is probably around the financial industry mm -hmm. or revenue cycle side of what we do and in the cybersecurity space. And uh, we're excited about the, some of the things we're seeing there. And we want to be early adopters of that technology as it involves. And then I think the third area, and I think probably one of the most important areas, is around the patient experience. So some people are now calling it the digital front door. And let yes. me ask you a question. I just wrote that down. Yes. <laughs> I did. I just wrote down digital front door is one of my notes. That's great. So yes. Uh, who was the last time you traveled? Uh, yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. When you when you booked your when you booked your appointment. Did you pick up the phone and, and, no. and do that with an agent? No, not okay. at all. Well, in healthcare, you're starting to see a movement to meet people where they are. That's and right. most people want to schedule. You're busy, people like yourself, you get in. You want to be able to schedule based on the convenience of time and access from wherever you are. Very true. And so we're all doing that, and I think we're seeing a big push to get healthcare caught up with the rest of the 21st century. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, the no digital front door. I actually would like to take a second, even before we move on, because we have the time, share maybe a minute on blockchain, because that's something that we've spoken about in the industry for now many years. I don't think people really understand it. I would, If you want to give one minute on blockchain and healthcare or why you're excited for it, would be great. Well, I, I'm extremely excited. First of all, it's a, it's a much, you know, you're seeing it being applied in industry now in the financial market, and it is just a much more secure way to have identity ma identity management occur uh, with various approaches to uh, various data connection points to make it literally, I won't say impossible, mm -hmm. but for someone to steal the identity of another person, right. institution, or set a currency or whatever it is. There are, there are ID matching types of technologies built into the blockchain environment that can't be replicated. And so if I give if I'm a, if I'm having a secure connection with you, uh, the technology behind the scene is already predefined and there are elements that I know that you don't have to know. But there are rules that guide that connection. And so it, it almost makes cyber crime mm -hmm. nearly yes. impossible. That's you know, that, right. so so I think that's why I'm excited, because people at the health record is still known as the most valuable and that's yeah, right most valuable sought after. you yeah, can have right. right and so and, and for a number of reasons we won't go into those now but that's that's why I'm excited uh, we want to protect the assets of our of our organization but we also want to make sure that when people do business with us or have patient care and, and information is this private information that we have even better ways to make certain that that doesn't get in the wrong hands 
Yeah. Excellent. You want to do, you have a question? I do. Roberta? I do. Interoperability yeah. is a huge ordeal now. We've been talking about it for 10 years. What are your challenges? And are you finding that you have more areas to, to work with these days? Well, I was a baby when interoperability started. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and look at me now. Yeah, I'm about, about to rock the boat here in a minute. No, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think the industry has made some great strides in that regard. Uh, I, I think if you sort of kind of can visualize individual buildings and think about the healthcare applications as an individual building, I think that healthcare has made great progress within the building, connecting all the offices and being able to exchange things within the building. Right. And uh, there has been some li- limited progress connecting to the building next to you right? and being able to do some things in a static way or, or maybe exchange certain elements of it. I think where we're, where, where you're going to see the, the, the puck move to, if that's a good mm-hmm. expression, yes. is – uh, this next phase where you have very dissimilar systems and through policy, something you've been talking about earlier and, <laughs> and other things that have to happen from a legislative perspective to get us there will be that ability to take dissimilar environments, but have something. And this is a technical term. I'm talking to Georgia him, but there's mm-hmm. something called open APIs. Sure. What that really means is a way for me to get information out of your system without having to comply with all of the dynamics that my system has, but a set of standards that we can exchange that information, share it and do it. So in a very, uh, what I, what I would call meaningful way. Sure. And, uh, and I think that's, that, that's the next level and you're starting to see huge. Uh, efforts occur in that space. Even on the innovation side of the house with this open API thing I'm talking about, you can develop something in your living room. And uh, if we, if it's meaningful to this patient record, we can figure out a way to do that through this new uh, technology that we're talking about today. And interoperability paves the way for that. But there will need to be some legislative changes around data sharing and some other things that I know you know about in yeah. detail. How's, how's the um, Georgia... HIE working out for you? It's working out well. Uh, we, we, we belong to several different, so we've got care quality with the, the vendor side. We've got the George HIE environment that we play into. But all of those environments still have their own uniqueness to them, and it's not quite as uh, fluid for physicians, for nurses, for administrators to use that. But you do get basic record information, something we couldn't say. Seven right. years ago, right? right? So I think progress is being made. Yeah. You know, we laughed about it. Real work is being done. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still not like you, yes. when you sit at home and you go in and log into your financial records, right? Yes. You're able to, to actualize pro, um, information from, information from those over. systems. Yes. That's right. And, and That's it's right. not quite at that level, but it's getting there slowly right. but surely. So on M&A and cybersecurity, blockchain, and patient experience, uh, back to the three trends that you're really navigating um, – you know, what are two or three best practices that you would share with my community on, um, on you know, and help them navigate those trends? Well, I think two or three things um, just come to my mind immediately. You, you know, you've got to work with the, the vendor partners. You've yes. got to work with the innovative groups, uh, such as the work you've been tied to, Justin, mm-hmm. in your path. Huh. We're, we're looking at working with the set of uh, new innovators that are now saying, Jeff, they're coming mm-hmm. to me saying, Jeff. Uh, rather than us building something and pitching it to you, right. they're starting to say, tell me what your problems are. Let us go in the laboratory and come back with uh, two or three solutions that might work. And we think that if you do that for us, others in your field probably will have some of those similar challenges. So, again, you can't develop it in the incubator at right. Piedmont. You've got to open it up to the marketplace. So we're heavily relying on our vendor community, the legislative branch to be supportive and yes. work through the through the government relations process to make those kinds of things happen. And then of course, pure old innovation. Right. Excellent. So thinking ahead, what do you think we need to be looking at as an industry in three to five years from now? Kind of looking ahead. Where do where do we need to be? Well I think you're going to continue to see apps and infrastructure move into something called the cloud in the old days mm-hmm. and it maybe even the current days people built out these large data centers and they had servers and storage devices and all types of switches and that type of thing. I think you're going to start seeing data shared in a mega environment and we're going to kind of say it's all up in the cloud somewhere mm-hmm. and that a cloud is 
a series of these things, <laughs> yes. but rather than each organization's having to have all that and build it and manage it the way we do today, it, you know, you're going to move some of that infrastructure and cost into that environment and, and improve the interoperability el- yes, capabilities with with your system. So that's one thing that I see here to stay. I also see this whole movement with the interoperability maturing. We've been talking about it since I was born. I know we joked about that, but really, seriously, with these open APIs and with the fire standards and those type of things, they're really moving barriers that prevented some of the great strides from happening. It's been incremental. And uh, now I think we have to do that times 10x annually. And I think that in two to three years, five years, you're going to see that no longer be a problem in healthcare. I think you're going to see that interoperability take phase. And then the final is the, you know, we talk, some, you joked about AI earlier yes. when you talked, but I think you're going to see process automation. You're going to yes. see AI uh, capabilities where you now will have call centers being managed by computers, right? And you, I, w- I would challenge you to tell the difference if you were talking to a computer or a person in some elements even today, yes. such as revenue cycle types of processes yeah. and workflows. If, it, if, it, if it's a process, they can do it much better, much and, clean, better yeah. and cleaner. And, 100% uh, accuracy. All right. That, yeah. And you can build those rules in yeah. for them to uh, react to certain tones and reaction to the public. So I think you're going to see that happen. And then process automation, that's Working at the code level, and, uh, and I'm talking to a Georgia Hymns group, so you understand. <laughs> but that's taking things that people ha- would have to do to compare numbers and resources to get pre-ops and yes. those types of things. It would be automatically done. And it took people to do them. Today, people do those things. Right. So I think automation is moving into healthcare in a major way, and I think it's through this robot uh, robotic process automation. I, I see that being a huge part of our future. Yeah, I actually have a um, – I, I was educated on RPA about uh, a year ago. I have an investment in um, revenue cycle management. Oh. And, and, yeah, they told me I'm – because I saw it on a budget line. I'm like, what are we doing with all this? And they said, well, this is actually – this is basically how we're going to manage our RCM, you know, coming up. And it's exactly – it's just taking the human aspect out of it, 100% accuracy, and you got all the rules and everything built right in, and it's a fraction of the cost. I mean, it's amazing. So, so the humans listening, uh, that, that's, it's not taking your jobs away. It's just it will allow you to focus on Correct. more complex types. Correct. Of but we can't. Where a computer can't help us because there's right. a there's tens of thousands of areas that we need humans involved in. But there's things that we don't need humans involved in where humans create errors, and that's where we need the that's computers. Right. To that's help. right. Um, Jeff, as always, my friend, great to have you in studio. Great to see you. Um, thank you for kicking the show off with me. Um, and you have a great afternoon, my friend. I will. Thanks for having me. You got have it. Have a great day. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff Brown, CIO of Piedmont Healthcare. And welcome, Bird Blitch, CEO of Patient Co. It is great to be here. <laughs> I mean, and sit next to Jeff, it's even better. Uh, I started my whole life journey off at Piedmont Hospital. Yeah, oh, so right. I was born there. God bless. Yeah, it's a great, great place. Great yeah. place to be from. Two great people. Yeah. Well, no, that's the whole fun part and fun aspect of the show. Um, this, this whole day, this these three hours is all friends and, and friends and family and friends of friends. It's great. So um, it's great to uh, to have you in studio, my friend, and, and thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. I know that you have a very busy schedule. I've just been awed by the growth of Patient Co. You guys are just doing a great job out there. Take Tell me a little bit about the last six months of your business. Well, um, I think the last six months or – Or a year, or, whatever. Or a year or yeah. years. Yeah. You guys have been doing well. Yeah. It's exciting. It, it, it's all about um, listening to the marketplace on mm-hmm. some of these big trends and building a great technology platform that solves uh, these patient financial experience problems mm-hmm. that we all experience. Yes. I mean, we've – whether you're a doctor or a nurse or an administrator or a consumer – we all experience uh, these challenges, and every challenge is there to be solved for. Amen. Now, I remember, I'll never forget, gosh, this is about seven, eight years ago. You had just started the company. I years. remember seeing you started off. Obviously, you're out of Georgia Tech. Uh, you started off in the Atlanta area, and we got a bill at our house from Patient Co. And my wife opened up the bill. She's like, this is the best bill I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, <laughs> let me see it. Why are you? And I was still agreeing at the time, and I'm like, that's Bird's company. Oh my gosh! I, I, I need to bring you in to uh, speak to the whole company about <laughs> this experience. This they is, get inspired by that. Yeah. Um, so, what uh, what healthcare health IT trends are you seeing in the industry, Bird? You know, you mentioned early on at Patient Co, but a lot of this started around the whole advent of the deductible. Mm. And you know, we think of deductibles with automobiles, we think of them yes. with houses. Who knew it would rise to be such a big deal in healthcare? And so the 
the I mean, deductibles now, you know, are certainly well north of two thousand dollars and well over half Americans, half of all Americans um, have a deductible. Um, and that's mm-hmm. a lot of money when you pile that up and you look at a health system that is dealing with a lot of face pay, patient financial responsibility and is tied to these trends that are being driven by deductibles, those are a lot of dollars that we have to figure out how to solve for. And then these high cost, another mm-hmm. big trend, this is something that I think we can all identify with. It it can lead patients to avoid care. For sure. Oh, I'm watching that. Yes. I mean, yeah. I saw the other day 54% of many um, consumers have skipped necessary medical care due to cost. No doubt. For sure. Crazy. Yes. Yes. And that's not what we want. No. Right? no. So they when you care. get into the yes. why of why we come to the office every yeah. day is Good to point. help solve some of these issues. Yeah. They're really critically important to healthcare being successful and to patients um, staying well. Yeah. I would say 54% delayed or canceled care due to cost. I would certainly, I believe, I mean, I, I literally watch it and I, yeah. I just see it. You see it. I mean, even with your friends, I might, like, I mean, it's also, they're not even sure what they're going to pay. It, it might be it might be no. ten dollars. It yes. might be fifty dollars, or it could be a. Th- they don't know. You don't know, right? And so, they, and, and that's natural. I mean, you're not sitting on tons of money. <laughs> it would scare you. Going, you know what? I'm going to skip this. And most other yeah. purchases we do from a consumer life cycle journey, we know. Yes, we we have thought about it before we go in, and that's something that entrepreneurial companies can solve for. That's a great thing about this country. We can see problems and go solve for them, and and the talent is there in this country to go do that. It's excellent. So um, what two or three best practices or strategies can you share to help others navigate those trends? Well, I think if you are in a health system today and, you know, health system, certainly your mission is to provide great clinical care, but you got to get patients. Mm -hmm. They are the customers. And so if we are going off what we just talked about around affordability, yes. I mean, there is an affordability crisis here. There is. significant. It's growing every day, too. It's growing every day. Yeah. And so I think, you know, when you think about what health systems can do to solve for that, um, earlier this year at Patient Co., we conducted a survey of patients and providers, and we found that nearly 70% of patients want to enroll in payment plans online. Yes. As opposed to like calling the health system, to go, talking it through, I'm busy. You know, I want to be able to self service, and um, and so I ask more of the team. Let's dig into this further, and we built a case study around that. Now Jeff just walked out, yeah. but we wanted to prove the theory around some assumptions. And Piedmont Healthcare increased payment plan adoption by 400 percent. Wow! In just two months after offering self service enrollment, and the key there is self service. Yes. So when we think about when we think about consumers, we so many times like to self-serve. Yes. Oh, yeah. We just talked about that. I mean, I travel now every week and I'm between Delta, Hertz and Uber. Everything is self-service. I don't talk yes. to anybody and I get the very best prices and the best service. It's and it's everything I want. It's and perfect. you're in control. You're yes. in control of that. 100%. So I just, I roll that into this broad consumerism strategy. How are health systems thinking about treating patients. So they, they, I mean, they all have the goal of providing, you know, they want to be in the number, I'm sure Piedmont, Northside, um, Wellstar, all these systems in Atlanta, they want to be leading around clinical care, but who wants to be number one in providing great financial care? That's excellent. No, that's perfect. And I did not plan you and Jeff being together. I just know it's a very small world. I didn't even know he was here until I walked in. <laughs> in the yeah. studio and there, there's I recognize Jeff. that voice. Exactly. So, uh, no, very cool. I just want to know from my audience, I did not plan that. This is not staged or a promotion <laughs> of anything in any way. It's just sharing best practices and strategies. It just happens to be that we're all friends and we, it's a, it's a great community. And I have innovators and all, but this is, we talked about this coming uh, before we started the show and, and as we came on air about the ecosystem we have in Atlanta. And you're, I mean, again, I didn't plan this, but you're a perfect example of that. And she even brought up that I was an entrepreneur and resident uh, at uh, Georgia Tech and their ATDC, their incubator. And, and you came out of that incubator. Oh, we did. I mean, yeah. we, you know, I go back. The wonderful thing is if you have an idea, there are resources that you can put to work to help be successful. Yes. And so, the thing about the ATDC, so that stands for Advanced Technology Development Center. So I'm going to give a quick plug. Please, yeah. But but we graduated there. Where do yes. you, you know, when you go and you graduate from somewhere, you typically are a big fan. Yes. And um, we went in there with some ideas, Joshua Silver and I, uh, as co-founders, and there were these resources. And they said, let us help you. Let us help you think about customer discovery, how you build right. your first minimal viable product. Yeah. How do you go out and listen to the marketplace? And what we already had the ideas, but they confirmed a lot of assumptions on what was building something that was critically important. 
And at Patient Code today, we've built mission critical enterprise level software. So you have to put a lot of thought. And then when you're delivering dollars into people's bank accounts yes. every single day, you can't slip up. And all those thoughts have, have built into something, you know, what I think of as a great company. It's a great company because of its great people. It's great people because we're in a great community that supports us. So we have a lot to be thankful for, yes. for all the entrepreneurials, uh, entrepreneurial type segments and circles and that support us. Right. Supporters. Right. Yeah. And you're one of them. Yeah. I mean, you've been there for us at different points of the yeah. way. Yeah. The journey's long and hard, but you got to be focused on the mission and be very committed to it. Yeah. And I mentioned that ecosystem. So we've got, you know, great institutions like Georgia Tech that gives us great graduates like you that become great entrepreneurs, very, very smart, um, and also foster them along with the ATDC as their, as their incubator. But then also the health systems like Piedmont and Emory and Children's who take our innovations and adopt them and put them in the market. You got it. And yes. help us build our product. And, and on top of that, and so that that ecosystem is critically important. You have to have all these different components. It's not just about having an incubator or having a health system no. or having a college, but it's about and, and or having other companies. It's about having them all yeah work and together. And the companies are so key. Atlanta has you know they're one of the leading two hundred and fifty at any given yeah, time. Think yeah, about that. Yeah. Uh, these Fortune five hundred companies oh, are yeah. five thousand. Yes, yes. And so what these companies have been great at is saying we want to lean on you right. to help build. Um, our, some of our ideas. We want to lean on you when it comes to inspiring innovation. Yeah. And they don't have the know-how to build the innovation, but they have the know-how to understand what the gates are, to test it, to deploy it, and to hold people accountable. And they do. Yeah. <laughs> they hold people accountable. Oh, yes. But that's how you build a community of something that's great. That's excellent. So yeah, now this is a blueprint. And I, and I like talking about this because I like to help everybody and, and my listeners are from all over the world and, and all over the country. And so, you know, Austin can do this and LA can do this. Every community needs to do this because healthcare is, I mean, we're talking about it's a $4 trillion annual issue. You crazy. It. Yeah. Crazy amount of growth and, and expansion of our costs. When a country, we can't afford the, these gr- yeah. high growth of our costs. Um, and so we need to tackle them and we need more innovators tackling it. We need more policymakers tackling it and we need more institutions tackling it. And we as communities, Communities can do it together. We can't. And I just like to put a call out. Yeah. If, you, if you are thinking about solving important problems in the world, there's no better place yes. than healthcare technology. And yeah. for that, there's no better place than Atlanta. Totally um, you know, Patient Co. is the combination of payments. Yeah. And they've got a huge fintech cluster here and healthcare technology. And you put that together with places like Georgia Tech and Georgia State and Emory that we can recruit out of. It's amazing what you get. And I'll, I got to yeah. get you to our new offices in Midtown. We moved down there. We're right by in the center of this ecosystem. And you walk out on the sidewalk. Oh, There's cool. just energy. You yes. just feel the energy. Yeah. And so here we are solving very important issues around huge opportunities around the patient financial experience. And we're right here in Atlanta it is pretty cool. Love it. So thinking beyond today, you know, what do you think, what do you see as a key strategy or trend that we must be ready to successfully navigate in three years from now? Well, we talked about healthcare costs. We talked about deductibles, mm-hmm. um, high deductible healthcare plans. I, I think to go back to that theme of addressing affordability. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm. every single person who's experienced healthcare yes. knows that this is an issue. And it's, you can pick up the paper, you can listen to the news. Yes. It's going to be talked about on, on shows like this. And so that is important. Now, if you start, you know, going through the next three years, I think consumerism in healthcare mm-hmm. will be the trend, not just a trend, but the trend. I agree. And Excellent. health systems have to think about how they are presented in a retail-like way to match the consumer experiences that we all have with other type of institutions. So far, this is a resounding theme. Is exactly what Jeff said. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, that was my notes. I wrote down my pre-notes under the show, Digital Front Door, and the whole yeah. consumer piece. And that was my notes. Then he brought it up. He laughed. Now I'm laughing at you. Everybody's well, saying this. It is. I mean <laughs> – from a healthcare system, we as consumers go in through one door and yeah. we get access to all the care and all the doctors and nurses. But what about the cost and the payment side? It's all yeah. disjointed. So agree. we are a disruptive business as we think about that. And imagine a day where you have one bill where everything is on that, just like your healthcare bill right. can be. You have a yep. water bill. Yes. You have an Amex bill. Yes. And all this is together. You see it all in one place. And therefore, your patient experience goes through the roof because finally you have control and you understand it. You can finance it. You can pay it. You could even defer it, but you understand your choices. And that's what Patient Co. is about, is empowering us as consumers to go address this problem and create a better patient experience and um, 
and and most importantly, health systems that are very happy that they solve for this. And ironic that you bring up you know that whole patient experience and digital front door because Dr. Monica Bobier just walked in studio here um, from I Cure see her for now. You. Yes, <laughs> yes, here she and is, and she's tackling that right now. And this is just this is not planned in any way, but this is it just shows how important the consumer experience, consumerism, um, you know, is uh, for our industry and where we're we're going as an industry. So, well, thanks for all you do for our community. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Justin. You've been fantastic to me, many many people along the way, Thank and you. what you've done um, to help improve healthcare technology along the way is amazing. I got to create a wiki page, a Wikipedia page on you, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it, I think it's worth doing. So I'll raise my hand, sign up for that cool. um, because it's going to be inspirational. Thank you, Bert. I appreciate it. Um, where are you guys? So what do you see that for the next uh, couple of months or year for, for patient code? What are you guys hoping to expand to or a new, what's the next frontier for you guys as you grow? Yeah. Well, I think from a, um, you know, product perspective, you'll continue to see us being embedded so deeply into Epic mm-hmm. and, okay. and even Cerner so that when we walk into these health systems. Hey guys, you spent, you know, $400 million on this product to help you operate better. Let me tell you how you can leverage it for all your patient communications and payments. Yeah. That's where we're going. And people want to hear that. And then because of that, once you're deeply integrated into technology, mm-hmm. Uh, platforms that people already have, the patient experience is just, it's blended. It's all happening and you don't even have to think about it. So you'll continue to see pretty strong, cool innovations from us coming and you as a patient will get to experience it. Love it. Yeah. Love so. it. Bird Blitch, CEO of Patient Co. Thank you very much, my friend. For Thank being you so here. much. Great you seeing you. If you missed any of this episode or want to hear more, all my shows are posted on Apple iTunes, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Google Play, and TuneIn. You also can check out all the updates that we've launched. Uh, at justinbarnes.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a terrific week.